all right. Lord, help me out and cut the whole scripture out to see where it was. Well, I think I was dealing with it a while back ago, so y'all might be able to find it. But it says, if any man amongst you seem to be religious and uh, bridleth not his tongue, he deceives his own heart. Uh, it says, and that man's religion is in vain. It, it, James, yeah, that's right. And it says, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So um, that one two verses says a whole lot. Uh, it says that your religion is in vain if you can't keep your mouth shut. I constantly tell us, you know, we got to stop telling people I'm going to give somebody a piece of my mind. What I told them, Sister Pinky, if they keep on giving away pieces of their mind, they ain't going to have no mind left. So we have to quit giving away pieces of our mind. But it says that pure religion and undefiled and to be undefiled before God is this. It says to visit the fatherless. Sometimes we don't take thought on people that don't have what we have. Some people didn't grow up the way um, some of ours have. Amen. I grew up in the house with my mom. Got around 13, had to go to Mississippi. Uh, then I was all over the place. Uh, they was getting ready to lock me up as a little boy, so I had to get out of here. Um, so some people don't have what we have, and I tell you, everybody needs a father figure in their life because a lot of times, you know, the world's going to try to get you anyway. Yes. But if you don't have a true father figure, yes. uh, a lot of times young ladies look for uh, that type of love in a man. And I told you a while back ago how crazy it can get. <laughs> you got these uh, folks that when they dealing with men, they, hey daddy, mm -hmm. uh, no, call them daddy. And the man crazy enough to say, call me daddy. I think you a pervert and she a pervert. <laughs> so now they done changed it a little bit and said, uh, ain't no, I ain't gonna call him daddy, but I'm gonna call him Zaddy. Zaddy. <laughs> and that's just a replacement. And a lot of times that's exactly what we're doing is we're trying to find a replacement. Because we have missed out on what was supposed to be. But lastly it says keeping himself unspotted from the world. When we deal with that part, I uh, often, I've been telling us lately about the fact that uh, sin in itself, worldliness in itself is spiritual adultery. And to understand spiritual adultery, you've got to know what natural adultery is. Natural adultery is simply going outside of your marriage. Messing with somebody that does not belong to you. Or that you don't belong to. And when we deal with that adultery, oh my God, as long as you marry, you have to Make sure that it's your wife that you're dealing with. That it's your husband that you're dealing with. Sometimes 
It even starts with, Elder tells us, I didn't sin when uh, I did it, but I sinned when I allowed it to enter into my heart. Oh, are y'all catching what I'm saying? So, uh, a lot of times what that is is simply being intimate with something that we shouldn't be intimate with. Uh, being intimate, intimacy is closeness, togetherness. It's uh, attachment to. It's uh, uh, companionship and even friendliness and affection. Now ask yourself, how many things do you show affection to? How many things are you attached to or close to that don't have anything to do with God? Oh my God. So what that is, it is spiritual adultery. When it tells us that we are not to be connected to the world. Keeps himself unspotted from the world. The Bible tells us that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Uh, how can that be? Well, the way that can be is if we are born again. Uh, one asked Jesus, how is it that you tell us to be born again? How can I re-enter into my mother and come out for a second time? No, that which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. And we must be born of the spirit. Born again. And that's uh, when we are, that's when the Bible tells us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. For old things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And when we deal with that spiritual adultery, it, adultery, it said, thou shalt not commit adultery. That is one of the Ten Commandments. And then God even called those that go against him and against his will uh, a sinful and adulterous generation. So I tell you, it takes a lot. It takes a lot uh, uh, to not do it, to not commit spiritual adultery because it's easy to do. But when we do it, we have to understand what we're doing. The Bible says every time we commit spiritual adultery, it's like we are crucifying Christ all over again. Are y'all catching this? Uh, when we're killing him all over again. We're putting nails through his wrists, nails through his feet. We're hanging him on the cross, wrapping ropes around his biceps. We are, are putting thorns in his head, whipping him until his flesh is ripped from his bones. Every time we sin or commit spiritual adultery, just think of how you would feel. If your wife He's sitting up working hard. But your wife turn around and, and while you at work, you go on break and, and you catch her in the car hugged up kissing on somebody else. Boy, Nick will drag Toya out that car. Huh? Nick will drag her out that car. I think that's the time we'll see Nick stop smiling. Think about it if you uh, were doing what you were doing and you caught your man coming out somebody's back door. How bad and how deep that would cut you. But every time we play with the devil, that's what we're doing to God. Are y'all catching this? But we constantly, I'm going to back up just a little bit, have to give people a piece of our mind. We constantly uh, got to do what we feel. 
When the Bible says, if any man come after me, the first thing he's supposed to do is deny himself. Take up his cross and follow. Come on, somebody. So it's imperative that we realize who we are, whose we are, and what we are supposed to be. When it comes to adultery, Genesis 2 and 24 says, For reason a man shall leave his mother and father is to unite or be united with his wife and that they will become one flesh. And, and to commit adultery, oh my God, you not became one. You are ripping yourself apart. Are y'all catching this? Uh, you're ripping yourself apart. You're ripping yourself right out of the body of Christ. Hey. And so it says we got to stay unspotted from the world. When I dealt with what I dealt with on yesterday, we were talking about how we are to be blessed. How we are to be delivered. How the the tub is going to bring forth that olive branch and bring peace into our lives. Only way we can truly have peace is in Jesus. Because he is the prince of peace. Come on somebody. Because the Bible even talks about the fact that we're troubled on every side. I don't know about you but everywhere I look nowadays there's trouble. Every time I get a phone call, there's some trouble. Yes. Every time I look, turn on the TV, there's trouble. We're troubled on every side. Yes. But because we are in him, living according to his word and his will, we're not in distress. But we have that peace. But when there's trouble everywhere, uh, how in the world are you not messed up? Because God promised to give you peace. And a peace that passes all understanding. To where people are going to look at you and say, she should have lost her mind by now. People are going to look at you and say, he should have been done giving up. But because we got God, we got something. And we know that if we suffer with him, we reign with him. But they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And the Bible says we'll mount up with wings like an eagle. Yes. And, and the reason they say that is because, Sister Jasmine, an eagle goes to the highest spot before he decides to fly. Thank you. And when he gets up there, all he does is jumps and glides. He don't even have to work hard and, and flap his wings hard. Because of the fact he's being carried by the wind. We can't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, but we got to make sure we're caught up going one way. Hallelujah. Oh, my, I ain't meaning to preach a Sunday morning thing right here, but I feel this. Hallelujah. But the road that leads to life, the Bible declares that it's a narrow road. But the road that leads to destruction, it's wide. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, wide load. Wide load. <laughs> because that's what a lot of us are carrying. I shouldn't say stuff because Roman takes it too far. <laughs> but that's what some of us are carrying. Wide loads. We're carrying everything with us. Come on, somebody. We're carrying lust. We're carrying hatred, we're carrying anger, we're carrying malice, we're carrying envy, strife, we're carrying everything. But in order to receive that life, that peace, that deliverance, there's no way that all of that is going to fit on the road that God's calling us to. Y'all catch that? So it's imperative that we hear God. That we stay unspotted from the world. And, and I, I keep going to the last part, but a lot of times you got to go before 
amen, to understand certain things. We have to be unspotted from the world, but it says to be undefiled before God the Father is also to visit the fatherless and the widows uh, in their affliction. So what is that telling us? You have to stay busy in the Lord. See, being a lazy Christian is not going to help us. Because how many of you know that we've been taught and told that the idle mind is the devil's workshop? When you ain't got nothing to do, when you uh, got your mind going here and there, the devil can jump in there and play anytime he wants to. But the Bible says if your eye be single, Meaning, if your eye be focused on God, yeah, it ain't nothing that can get in there. It ain't, it ain't nothing that can mess with that. But you are going to be full of light. And darkness is going to have to flee. Every time the light turns on, darkness runs faster than anything I've ever seen. Hallelujah. Darkness instantly goes away. Hallelujah. So we got to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Come on somebody. And in all that we do then we'll be able to ask anything and it will be given to us. You can ask what you will in my name and it will be given to you. That's where you're healing your peace, your deliverance, your love, your joy. All of that is going to come from. Hallelujah. By staying focused on God. Hallelujah. Doing the works of him that sent you while it's day. Because the nighttime is going to come. Look at somebody and tell them the nighttime is going to come. Yeah, it's going to come. And, and when it comes, you're not going to be able to work. A flashlight ain't going to help you. Hallelujah. No matter what, that darkness, nighttime is going to come. And you ain't going to be able to do what you want to do. Hallelujah. So you might as well get busy right now because in getting busy right now, you know what you're doing? You're storing up treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Old saints used to say, every time I sing, I'm sending up a little temper. Every time I pray, I'm sending up a little temper because I'm building my house. I'm furnishing it. I'm putting everything I want in it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And that house, Brother Congo, they say, eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man how awesome, how great it's going to be. Yeah. Glory to God. Uh, so I done talked for about 24 minutes. I feel God. Somebody just give him a hand and praise while he's here. So many things we're going after. So many things we're trying to achieve. But Everything that you do, you just make sure that it's in the will of God. Make sure it's in his will. Hallelujah. Because the safest place in the whole world is in the will of God. Hallelujah. That's your safe place. Some of us think our safe place is taking a break. <laughs> Some of us think our safe place place is just getting away from church for a minute. We think our safe place is I can't be around these folks today. No, the safest place is in God's will. Hallelujah. And in God's will, forsake not the assembling of yourself together in this manner. In God's will, you might have to go out into the, the, the highways and the hedges around people that you don't want to be around. Hallelujah. In God's will, Jonah had to deal with people that he did dislike.
fight that he didn't want to deal with. Hallelujah. So the safest place is in his will. So let's make sure. Oh my God, I'm trying my best to slow it down and cut it off. Let's make sure that we get in his will. Stay in his will. Hallelujah. And lean on him. Brother Roman, because who leaned on him? Amen. <laughs> who else leaned on him? Is there anybody else? And if they leaned on him, we can lean on him because he's what? So, it's important that we get in his will, that we stay in his will, that we trust him, that we stay unspotted from the world, that we do all that we're supposed to do. Is that all right? Woo! Let's give the Lord another praise right there. And he just put in my heart to quote this scripture. As you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we can't attain it because we don't believe it. And sometimes we don't believe it because we know who we are. Uh-oh, that done went up a above some of our heads, Brittany. What I mean by we know who we are, we still the ones that got the case of the I can't help it. We still the ones that can't keep our mouth shut. And when we know we haven't done all the way right, sometimes we can't trust God to do things for us because we know that we're not worthy. So our faith fails us. Y'all catch that? But God wants to bless each and every one of us. God wants to deliver us all. He wants to heal us. He wants to meet all of our needs. As a matter of fact, he promised if we're in him that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. And we look over that fact. But how rich is he? Bible said he owns cattle up on a thousand hills. Every now and again, we ain't been over to Jerusalem, but if you look that up on YouTube, you'll see how many cows are on those hills that they was talking about. And, and said uh, the heavens and the earth is his. The earth is his footstool. Heaven is his throne. He created it all and everything in it. So if it all belongs to him, oh my God, and we be heirs and joint heirs with Christ, imagine what we can have if we're doing what's right. Oh God, I had to teach a little bit tonight. I'm going to put this mic down before we be here to 8 o'clock. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Y'all <laughs> I always give it to him when it's hot because I know he can pick up wherever I leave off.
If you're cussing, you're, you're, you're pretending. If you always have attitude, you're pretending. If you don't have a kind word, you're pretending. Amen. Because whatever you're acting on the outside should come from your heart. How many of us are indicted by our own actions, yeah. by our own words? I often say, Pastor, if you don't know where you are, just take yourself for a day. Woo. You'll find out exactly where you are. And then he goes on to say, he says, pure religion and undefiled religion are those who do this and that, I noticed one thing about that. It had nothing to do with you, but what you do for somebody else. See, we like things coming to us. We like money coming to us. We like blessings coming to us. But that's not good religion. It's what you do for others. What did they tell us back in the old days? Whatever you do for, we what? But whatever you do for others, God recognizes. And then he goes on and he just puts the slam on you. <laughs> the smack down. You have to remain unspotted. The first thing was, is watch your mouth, check your heart. Don't pretend. Do for others. And stop being so dirty. Stop being sinful. Yes, Lord. That is good religion. Amen. It's not your dresses. Mm. It's not your suits. It's not the collar. It's not all the ceremonies. It's none of that stuff. God is looking for a church without a or a wrinkle. Spot or a wrinkle. Lord, dry clean my spirit and get me some. <laughs> the blood cleans you. Where they say the blood still works. Amen. Clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Amen. If nothing else, your pastor taught today, amen, should make us check ourselves. Check ourselves. Amen. Have a, have a religious test. Amen. We all have cell phones. Just turn on the record and just talk around it all day. All day long. And you'll find out exactly where you are. Because the world listens to what you're saying. It listens to everything. And, and that's why if you start talking about something too much, mm -hmm. it's going to pop up on your Facebook. Come on. It's going to pop up on this. Come on. On that. I was telling mm -hmm. my son that the other day. Mm -hmm. How ironic that was. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. They're listening. All Listen. All <laughs> have you noticed how people's tweets are coming back to haunt them? People's, what they say. And see, the thing about it is that I believe the scripture says that God has a book. Thank you, Jesus. Either your name is written in that book or it's not. And it's all depending upon what you do. Thank you, Jesus. We have to give an account for everything that we do in our body. Amen. But that's not just every action. That's every word. Amen. Every thought, every intent. Amen. We got to realize, amen, that not, not only are our friends and our children looking at us, but God been looking at you since the day you were conceived, and he's going to judge you according to what you've done. Oh, yes. And he knows. Woo, and he knows. We can, see, I can trick pastor, but I can't trick God. And we pretend. Stop pretending. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why not do it for real? Thank you. I got enough things to waste three hours of my day on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I might as well do it for real. Especially when I see others getting blessing. I want my blessing too. Amen. Amen. Nothing excites me more than to see someone else get blessed because I want my blessing. Amen. Pastor was so much, amen, into someone else's blessing. He said, God, what about me? <laughs> Uh, what about, I, I'm happy for him. Amen, but what about me? Oh, my Lord. I, 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 I'm and, done. And, and when you do it, he, he, he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. I remember sitting up here prophesying to everybody one day, and then I said, Lord, what about me? 
speak to me, give me something. Mm -hmm. And I stood in here and I prophesied to myself. I said, before the end of this year, you're going to pay your church off. Mm -hmm. yeah. said, before the end of this year, I'm going to give you a house. Mm -hmm. And when I said that, I had no, I didn't understand. And I spoke it out loud. I said, this would be embarrassing if it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. But sure enough, we ended up almost homeless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but before it was all over, we had a house paid for. Before it was all over, the church was paid for. God brought to pass everything he said, yes. and I that's why I can't be afraid uh, to do that. It was a Monday night like this. Yes. Yeah. But glory to God, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. But we got to learn how to be happy for what he does for others as well. Mm -hmm. We have to be concerned about others. That's why I'd say, uh, if you give, yes. it'll be given to you. Come on tonight, because Come on. a lot of times what we do, it, it ain't about, we're giving to ourselves. Yes. No, forget what they're doing, let me pray. Let me pray for me. Right. Let me pray for this. Let me do this for myself. You. No, you've got to do for others if you want to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. my. Elder, this is good. Yes, you. you know another sign, Pastor? Go ahead. If you don't know where you're, where you're really concerned, Look at and listen to what you prayed about. If 98% of your prayer is about you, you have problems. Oh my God. And if 98% <laughs> and, and, and if 50% of your prayer or 75% of your prayer is about what people are doing to you, mm -hmm. same thing. Amen. You know, you, you've got to be able to. If you cannot have your prayers against the ones that's persecuting you, mm -hmm. that's treating you wrong, mm -hmm. the ones that nobody else is thinking about, mm -hmm. then something is wrong. Mm -hmm. It talks about the widow. It talks about the fatherless. It talks about those type of things. It said that even when your enemy, the one that hates you, mm -hmm. asks you for something to eat, yeah. you better go in there and fix him a plate mm -hmm. like you fixing it for yourself. Y'all catching this? People hungry and they come and ask you for something. And God said, Amen. we got to stop walking around mad all the time. Oh, my God. Kind. Yeah. Scripture literally says. Because anger rests in the bosom of a fool. Not realizing everybody plays the fool sometimes. <laughs> Who saw that? I, I was just thinking, just hit me. I don't know what's funny, though. Yeah. Nevels. Yeah. And, and, and everybody plays it, but we can't continue to walk around messed up. Mm. Why is that? Because that is a weight. Oh, yeah. weight. And every weight, we got to pick it up and lay it aside. And lay it aside. Yeah. Because it's in our way. It's hindering us. It's holding us back. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wait and sin. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is good. Amen. Let's clap our hands and tell the Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 If you would do that, amen. Amen. And let's see what God has for us. Amen. Not just you, but see what God has for your neighbor. See what he has for you. Your friend, amen. I want God to save everyone in my neighborhood. Everybody. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, they thought, just one second, when I moved in, they thought I was going to have a whole bunch of parties. They they judged me because I'm like the only brother in the whole place at this time. And, and they judged me. They're like, oh my God, he's going to have a whole bunch of parties. And they had a little meeting, amen, when they saw me moving in. And then one day I come out in my clergy college. And it changed everything. Yeah. It changed everything. And why am I saying that? If you're going to talk the part, won't you live the part? Yes, There's been times that people can look upon you and see a glow upon you, and you're in your McDonald's uniform. Because it's not the uniform, but it's God with you. Have you ever noticed, and I'm done, and you can take it. When, 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 when God was looking for Adam, he said, God, Adam, where are you? He 
said, where are you, Adam? You know God doesn't lose anybody. He knows where everyone is. Um, so what did Adam lose? Amen. Because God knew where he was, but he lost that glory. Amen. The glory of God upon him. He had left him. See, sometimes we're lost because we lose his glory. Amen. We let sin come into our life to the point that we're displaced from heavenly kingdoms, amen, from heavenly seats next to him. What we have to realize, amen, is that the things we do takes the glory of God off of our life and we lose protection, we lose providence, and we lose blessings because we're out of position. Yes. Oh my goodness. How many times have you lost a blessing because you were out of place? church, but out of place. Singing in the choir, but out of place. Praying, but out of place. Amen. Serving, but out of place. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Going through the motions. Yes, Lord. But your heart isn't even there. Yes. Yes. We as a body have to do better. Yes, Lord. We have to. When you sin, it should convict you. Yes. You should be bothered by it. Yes, Lord. And I don't know anyone, amen, who doesn't sin mm. personally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be straight up. And if you think yes. you can, we can have a discussion right now. That's oh, right. <laughs> I open up the show. Oh, yes. <laughs> but you have to repent. Yes, Lord. I have to repent. Yes, Jesus. You have to repent. Yes. Amen. Let's let's say this. I'm trying to let him. Pray. I, 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 I and he's coming. coming. He's right there. there. But but the most Amen. time we do it, we do it at home. Come on. Come you on. hear what I'm saying? Because at home, it is where we're comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we let our hair down, and and we don't care about what's going on yes. in the house. Yes. You get what I'm saying? And and but the problem is, it's not the outside that God's looking at. It's what's on the inside. It's the heart. Yes. So when we're doing what we're doing at home, God is looking at that. Yes, Lord. That's why you'll find that the most arguments you're going to have is going to be with your wife and your husband. Oh, yes. Your children is the ones you're going to tell off the most. Oh, yes. You get what I'm saying? Because we're at home and we're not concerned about everything else that's going on out there. Oh, I'm done. Mm. Elder, come on. Come on. Before I get lost. This is good. This is good. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this word. We thank you for the deposit tonight. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this word tonight. We thank you. We thank you for the word. God, change us. Change us, God. Turn us, Lord. Turn our hearts. Hallelujah. Back to you, God. Draw us close to you. Hallelujah. Turn our minds. In the name of Jesus, turn us, Lord. We repent tonight. We repent, God. We repent. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, God. Forgive us tonight. Forgive us. Hallelujah. Lord, we repent, God. Oh, God, turn our hearts and our minds back to you, God. Hallelujah. We want to be in right position. We want to be found in your will. Oh, God, we want to have that glow. We want to be found in your glory, God, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. We want to be better, God, in the name of Jesus. Wash us, Lord. Wash us, God. Wash us. Wash our eyes. Wash our hearts. Create in us a clean heart. Renewing us a right spirit, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we need you tonight. We need you. We need a touch from you. Uh, we need your anointing. Uh, oh, God, pour out your spirit on us, God. Uh, we need your power, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, breathe on us, Lord. Uh, breathe on our minds, God. Uh, breathe on us. Change us, Lord. Uh, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, teach us, Lord, uh, how to love our enemies, God. Uh, oh, God, I'm going to pray for those that despite misuse us. Uh, oh God fill us up God. Uh, fill us up God. Stir up the gifts on the inside. Uh, oh Father we need you. Uh, we need a touch from you tonight God. We thank you for the word tonight. Uh, oh we thank you for God. We thank you oh God for your word uh, that you allow our ears to hear God. Uh, oh God let it fall God. Uh, hallelujah let it grow God. Hallelujah that we may 
bear fruit, God. Hallelujah, that we may grow, God. Hallelujah, that we may mature, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we rebuke all flesh. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, heal broken hearts, God. Heal the minds of your people, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, touch us again. Oh, God, get strength to the body, God. Get strength to your body, the church, God. In the name of Jesus, build us up, God. Where we've been torn down, cast the devil out. Cast him out of the wheel. Cast him out of the emotions. Cast him out of the mind, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, help us, God, to deny ourselves. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we want to be like you. Oh, God, in everything we say and do, God. Oh, God, in the way we live, in the way we talk, God, in the way we give, God, help us, God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, you've chosen us and you allowed us, God, to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the deposit tonight, God. Oh, God, that you have allowed our ears to hear, God. Oh, we thank you for our leader tonight. Oh, God, we thank you, oh, God, for the saints, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, pour out your spirit on all flesh, God. Change us, God. Make us ready, God. In the name of Jesus, earn out, God, all the wrinkles. In the name of Jesus, blot out all of our transgressions. Wash us, Lord. Purge us, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give up the ground tonight. We give up everything that's not like you, God. Oh, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your anointing. Send your power, God. Send your power, God. Oh, God, let there be a Pentecost. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, turn us on the inside. In the name of Jesus. And we'll give you glory, God. We'll give you praise. We'll magnify you. We'll exalt your name, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you for that prayer, Elder. Thank you, Pastor, for that teaching. The assistant pastor for the overflow. Bless me tremendously. We are going to give and sow into this word. Those that are watching the stream can give electronically. You can give on Cash App, Money Sign, Revival Center, IA. You can give on Give a Five Revival Center, Church of God in Christ. Those of us that are in here, we're going to prepare our hearts to give. A few announcements has been updated. Uh, Saturday, March 25th, 7 p.m. is a women's only outing. Um, Sunday, March 19th, 4 p.m. Uh, our pastor will be preaching at Maple Street Baptist Church, located 1552 Maple Street. The choir's been asked to sing. We ask our Revival Center to support in their uh, services. March 20th through the 26th is our Ministers and Workers Conference, our jurisdictional uh, meeting in Kansas, and it'll be a miracle temple nightly. Um, we'll be carpooling, we'll be traveling, we'll be riding in vans. Um, so if you wanna go, let's get in touch with Sister Toya so that we can uh, get that worked out.
regular services are uh, there's prayer with the Lanham Wars Monday, uh, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Uh, and it's also streamed on our Facebook. So if you don't get to catch it, you can always review it. Children's Sunday School, 9.15. Sunday School, 9 a.m. for adults. Morning Worship, 10.30 a.m. Monday night, which we're at right now, 6 p.m. Pastoral Teaching and Prayer. Wednesday night, Bible Study, 6 p.m. As well as a dinner that is prepared for us as we are being fed spiritually. Purity class, second and fourth Wednesdays. Purity, that's for the young ladies, uh, ran by Sister Lindsay and her staff at 6 p.m. for girls ages 12 to 17. Men of Valor, young men of valor, ages nine to 19, uh, meets here at the church. Each second and fourth Saturday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. noon. Each session will include a real talk subject matter that affects our young men, such as bullying, peer pressure, anger, and other social and spiritual topics uh, that they can openly discuss in a safe and judgment free environment. So please see Brother Tony uh, or myself, even if you want to have your sons uh, join and be a part of that. Uh, those are our announcements. We thank you so much for that. Uh, can I get Brother Edgar? I know he got his headphones in. I wanna see if he can walk this plate around for me. Can you walk this offering plate around him? Thank you, son. Right here, can you grab this plate? <laughs> I think you can walk it around and receive the offering for the people. I think you can handle that. Thank you, son. Thank you so much. Watch your step. There you go. Some people are given electronically, so we thank God for that even here. Anything else you got for us, Pastor? Uh, as we close out, make sure we play, pray for Brother Glenn. Uh, his son is getting ready to get on the boat and go to California. Um, and he wanted prayer for him. So there will be a pray for him June. Got it. All right. ourselves. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us and feeding us fresh manna from heaven. God, we ask that as we leave this place, we ask that you don't allow your presence to leave us, but allow us to meditate on you both day and night. We ask that you bless Brother Glenn as he travels cross the highways for his work. Protect him, keep your angels and protection round about him. Bless Deacon Glenn. Touch him in his body from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And those that are sick among us, we ask that you send healing, Lord. Give strength, touch them. Those that are in mourning, encourage them and lift their hearts. And we'll be careful to Give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Lord, we ask that you bless this offering. Bless each and every person that gave. Let it be used for your kingdom. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.